Have you ever listened to a James Marriott song and thought to yourself, hmm, I wonder what James Marriott thinks of this James Marriott song? Well, today you'll find out. And if you've never listened to a James Marriott song and have just stumbled upon this video, I have now made a playlist, the best of James Marriott. Everything in C and above will be in that playlist. Go and take a listen before watching this video. <laughs> this is every song I've ever released. You may notice not many covers here. I've only actually done three EPs and two other songs that weren't in an EP. And this is a very random order order for them all to be put in but i figured yeah we'll go with this order calling 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 i know it's your free don't pretend that you know what you are who'd want to be me i don't mind this song i i think this was one that was very early me when i started picking up a guitar again to try and write music it was just this um chord progression that someone gave me once That chord progression still has a chokehold over me. I accidentally write it regularly. I don't know, calling's not bad, but I wouldn't put it in the upper echelons of James Marriott music. I think the chorus is mid as hell. So it's gonna go ahead and, 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 and be our first C. Uh, I'm gonna mute to fart. Please cut that. Do you want a vinyl? Buy vinyl. Oh my God, guys, buy vinyl. For a limited time, you can also buy some of the tour merch. So go along to jamesmarriottmusic.com and don't miss out. Car lights. I feel like falling for someone else. You can go To get this one so early is a bit mad. I recently went on a podcast. Uh, well, not it wasn't a podcast. I, I went live with Sarah Simons to talk all things mental health. I was gonna say all things me there. No, it was it was more than just me for once. And uh, I actually opened up about car lights for the first time ever. I don't know if I've really ever fully spoken about it, but I think it's a very important song to me and to some of you wonderful people. We're gonna get onto New Face later. It, it tried to take a structure that I like, which is songs kind of like, just kind of perusing at this level and then at the end going, well, bam! And I think it did that much better than New Face. Do I think it is perfect? No, I didn't like the guitar tones. I still kind of, I'm not so happy with the way that guitars sound, but that's just something you learn <laughs> as you make more music that you just hate the stuff you did before. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and slap Car Lights in A. I think Car Lights is an, an A, gym song it's a song for the gym and next up is denial which is in fact a river in egypt and yes your husband is gay i have been sat on denial for so long <laughs> Stand up then. <laughs> Let him breathe. You know, <laughs> shut up. I had this riff ages ago when we started rehearsing for, for live music. That's not the riff. Go listen to the fucking song. I like the song. I don't like my vocal performance. I think it's a little too like, hi, hi, pop punk. Less of that in the next stuff. I, I, I think, however, I like the instrumental quite a lot. I think we got the sounds right. I just wasn't so happy with my vocal performance. And so I'm gonna slap it in B. I quite like the lyrics, but yeah. Don't blame me. I'm cutting on ties, that's all I can do. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I think it's the best song ever. No, <laughs> I don't. I think it's a cracking song though. There's a, a few songs here. If they weren't written by me and I heard them, I'd go. Whoever wrote this is a genius. Uh, no. I think it's a very well-written song. I like the chorus. I think that's great. I love the verse as well. I love it all. Um, and it also means a lot to me. It's very rare you stumble upon something and you write something that you really like. And then when you perform it, you think, God, that feels good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and slap. It's our first S. I knew I loved it so much because you really, when you have a focus single that you release before an album comes out, you shouldn't really release the last song on the album because people look forward to that when the album comes out. But I was just like, I can't just let this be a song on the album. This song has to be a single. And I'm glad it was. I did a little music video for it with um, Owen and uh, Ribena Ballerina. And, and I think it's a cute little music video. It's not quite as good as the romanticize this music video, but I did a little Jimbo Mazza music video because I ran out of money. Hopefully with the next project, I have more money and could just kind of throw it in the direction of Pine Lee and just go, please. Next up we have Going Postal at the Party. I'm cutting people out again. Not hard to see their faces when I pursue. Haunting you. I like this song. <laughs> 
funnily enough, when I sent the album around to people, Going Post at the Party was one that some people were like, I don't know why this is on this project. And other people were like, this is my fave. I like it. I, I think we, we were kind of working out th that more hi-fi pop direction, which we just stumbled upon in Grapes. Like I, I, I remember thinking, looking back at Grapes when we were making Going Postal, I was like, how do we make Grapes sound so pop? And I guess I kind of struggled to find that with Going Postal. The decision-making on my end wasn't fantastic, but I think it's a good song. I would go ahead and put it in B. I quite like the lyrics. Jono, my writing partner, said that it's his favorite lyrics of any song we've ever made together, I think. Or at least I feel like he would say that about it. Gold. C or D for gold because I just I listened to song two by Blur and I was like oh I love the fact that there's like a woo woo I should do that 50 times I should do that fi I should do that all over a song I just kind of took an, a thing I liked and went Bleh, all over it I do like some of the tones we got going on I don't really like the falsetto performance in the chorus the verses I'm kind of getting into my flow a little bit in terms of writing lyrics but I, I hadn't quite gotten there yet I don't think at least to where I am now. D? Oh, I feel like I can put it in D because in the best of James Marriott play, there's so many, gold is in so many playlists. I don't know why. I think it's because it's called gold. If you go on my Spotify and you look at the, we've discovered on gold. There's a, just a playlist called gold. Have they taken it off? No way. They took off my song. You meanies. So yeah, another news, the gold, gold's now going on the best of James. Oh, it's not. Grapes. Not smiling with his eyes again She said he doesn't want it He just needs a friend He's only getting better Now the road is being sad Did nobody ever tell you Grapes are better in September I went for a period of playing live music where I really disliked having to play Grapes live because I just think we hadn't gotten we hadn't gotten it right yet. And now I think it's one of the highlights of our live set. And it is the one where every now and then I just want to hear that drum intro. So I think that's a, a sign that it's kind of stuck with it. I don't think it's an S tier though. I don't think it's an S tier because I think the vocals could have been a bit more dynamic or at least a little bit more confident in whatever direction. It's in the lower realms of my voice. And now I've kind of learned that in my lower voice, it kind of sounds nicer to sing a bit softer. So I either, if I wanted a high energy song, I should have just made it a bit higher. Or if I wanted, you know, to soften the instrumental and, and just take a bit of a back seat with my voice, that could have worked. Regardless, um, who cares? I did just kind of magic the lyrics out of nowhere as well. I was looking for a song on the Bitter Tongues EP that was just not about me at all. And I accidentally ended up writing about my friend. Um, so sorry to that friend. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in A. I, I think it, oh, tough, really tough. Cause I think a lot of people who like my music would put it in S, but I, I just disagree. There you go, I disagree. Him. Why did it have to be him? Slap bang down the middle. I think him is a good, a well-written song. I think it's like basic James Marriott indie rock song. Package it up, play it at every show for the rest of my life because people sometimes just come to the show to hear that song. I Mental, by the way, like when I was making music in 2020, 20, this, I was making this in 2020. Slow Down had come out and it had done pretty well. I think it had like a million streams after a few months. I was like, wow, I could I can make music and that be a thing that I do. Him just blew up like i i, I real looking back i never would have thought that it did would do as well as it did at the time and it gave me a completely unrealistic expectation for how my music would perform i have outperformed it at times like within certain metrics but nothing i have has that many streams. It is my most viewed thing, most listened to thing, most seen thing ever, including collabs. Wait, hold on, I might be lying. How much does the Cybermen Hide and Seek have? 12 million. All right, still, we are beating the Cybermen versus 40 YouTubers ultimate hide and seek just about. Did you guys know I'm a YouTuber? <laughs> In between. I can't rest if I can't sleep. I just wanna be like you. upset people i 
Ooh. I don't hate the songs in D. I just think I could have done them better. I think in between as well, I could have done better. I think you can kind of tell when I do a project, which ones I kind of release executive control of. And I'm not to say that they are worse than the other ones, but I think they feel less me. And I think with a lot of my music, people want it to feel like it is me that is making it. Denial and Going Postal are pretty tongue-in-cheek, and when I release 10 songs, it's obviously going to be a bit of tongue-in-cheekness. So yeah, In Between was just a bit too dark, and I, I still want to write dark, like darker music, but it didn't feel dark in the sense that I've made dark before, like Car Lights, um, which is a bit more grungy. I don't hate the song. I think it's cool. Uh, I also think like adult men seem to love in between. Most of my friends' dads will go, but that's their, that's their favorite, unless they're kind of like a bit more rocky. One, one of them has said before, this is the song that you go to the bar to get a drink during at a gig. But then my promoter, Chris, said it was his highlight of the show. So there you go. New face F, move on. I don't care. When's James gonna play New Face at, uh, at a gig? Never, never, never. New face James Marriott lyrics. These are, it's, it's crap. You said I had a new phase with more people taking note of it. Grow up. I, I, this was an era of my life where I was just like, fine. <laughs> I'm famous. I was insufferable. I'm glad I'm not who I was in 2020. You can come and get some. I, I don't fight people. I remember when I was a kid, that some, some kid was like rugby tackling me when I was like 10 years old. And I remember I, I like slapped him in the face. I didn't even punch him. And then I got so upset that I just kind of curled into a ball and cried. So no, you can't come and get some. Uh, it would deeply upset me. Over my head. <laughs> respect to everything else in this list and to feel like it is weighted out evenly i like over my head but i think it's more of a me song like i made that song for me i enjoy that song myself and i feel like not many other people do romanticize this God, gonna slam that in oh hey one of the things that Jono said to me writing partner Jono who also plays live with me he says that from the are we there yet era the two songs that we will always play live or don't blame me and romanticize this and I I agree within any context they go hard like at a festival they go hard at a live show in general they go hard 20 years from now if I'm still playing live music fingers crossed I reckon um, it would still be a great song to play live. So for that reason, I'm going to slam romanticize this in A. I do find myself listening to it every now and then because it's quite a simple Jimbo Mazza song. That little ch -ch at the end, love that. Sleeping on a train B. It's going in B. I, I think Sleeping on Trains is good. I think in terms of... Oh, God, this is tough. This is real tough. I love the instrumental. I remember writing that guitar line for the... Which I can't even... I can't even tell you how to play that. I don't play it live, so... I remember that was the first time I kind of created a guitar line with, like, a dissonance in it. Like, playing two notes at the same time that are very close. And I... Ah. Love it. Big fan of that. More of that to come, probably. But I think the vocal performance just didn't really know what it wanted to do. This was this was a period of my life where I was still working out my voice. Everything up until Sleeping on Trains. This was kind of the last song where I, I hadn't really learned about my voice that much because I just wasn't using it all that much. By the time that Carlite's Grapes and um, Wegg came out, I was rehearsing music quite a lot. So I was singing every week, sometimes twice a week. And that was just something I never did before then. So you can kind of tell when that happened, the vocals became a bit more confident. And now I'm kind of in a place where I'm interested to see what it's like to kind of strip my vocals back a bit more. Now that I've kind of shown to myself, I can be loud, I can project. Now it's purposefully rain it back when I when I can. B for Sleeping on Trains. I want it, but can you slow down? F. I hate slow down so much. I'm so close to just stripping it away from the internet. But for the meme, I'm not doing it. Holy shit. If you come to a live show, don't ask me to play this song. I'm just over it. I liked the live version for a little while, but it does. It's quite a lot when your worst song that is a meme, people ask me to play it all the time. And, and yeah, I think the live version is better, but I think we got a lot better 
songs these, these days. So yeah, so long. <laughs> going to be surprised by this i'm going to put so long in d i think you know what it is the mistake i feel i made with the album was playing some of the songs a year before the album came out i i think it meant that once i played it live and i was coming to make it i felt like i had to be honest to the live performance of it which felt kind of restrictive in going into the studio now if you ever hear a song live it's been recorded hopefully maybe maybe not i don't know when we do the reruns in june i may play something so you can't even buy a ticket now. Um, thank you for selling out Liverpool. So yeah, that was one of my regrets of the album. The other side. You will know that nothing loads the gun. The only way to go is turn your head and run. I'm gonna put in C. I think it is a average James Marriott song, slightly below. Maybe this is just my taste. I just think it's a little too rocky. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in C. I, I just think I was getting a bit overexcited of playing live music. And I was like, we need, we need to write another rock song that people can jump to. So I wrote that. And now I think going forward, I want to write music which impacts people live in a way that isn't, you know, just jumping. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not about you. It's too Makeup is going in D. I, I think, again, I was still learning production. I, I wasn't particularly happy with the direction I was in at that point. A, a lot of big changes happened after then. Uh, the guy who produced it, uh, Holder, I'm now working with him again, which is nice. So I, 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 uh, he is helping us make a bit more of the next album. And he has a, a more pop mindset. So it, it, he's a very interesting person to have on board. But I think at this period in time, what him and I wanted was very different. And Wake Up was kind of the love child of that difference, which didn't help it at the time. But who knows? In the future, I'm never going to play that song again. I don't know why I'm telling you. Where is everyone gone? Good enough for you. Maybe, maybe C. I'm going to put it in C for this, but it might not be in the best of James Murray playlist. I think it's okay. I think it was an experiment I did that was important for Are We There Yet. I think you can listen to Wag and go, oh, so he kind of took Are We There Yet in this sort of direction. Like I used similar um, amps and distortion plugins. So I felt I feel like Wag was kind of in the direction of Are We There Yet. I, I love the chorus. I think the verses are a bit meh. Uh, they don't really do much. And then the C part, I, I just got this like realistic strings plugin. Uh, so I, <laughs> I put that in there. And I like how it sounds. But now looking back, it's like, why do you do that? <laughs> he, he just goes, I like strings. This song that doesn't deserve strings at all. Have strings. White noise. What's the point of a friend? Put it in A. I'm going to put White Noise in A. I, I think I like this song because it went through a lot of evolutions. And usually a song of mine that goes through a lot of evolutions ends up not being that great. And I kind of want to distance myself from it. But I I quite like the, the, the direction the White Noise ended up going in. The strings are very sharp in it. But you can't really tell because they're strings. Really weird thing about music. If it was a guitar, it would sound really bad. But because it's strings... It's okay, apparently. And it was very difficult to format the um, the rest of the guitars to be slightly sharp. Like, we were purposefully detuning the guitars so that the strings would sound better. And now when we play it live, we have to... Uh, we put the strings on track, because obviously I can't afford to bring a string quartet everywhere. Even on track, the, the strings are... Um, the strings are changed, because we had to put them down to semitones, and that warped the audio, and then it sounded really sharp. So we had to take out, I think, the cello no the viola maybe i think it's just not in there or it's really low in the live track because it sounds so out of tune but love the song i i went to go see blur live and i remember thinking wow they have such positive feeling choruses i should have at least one song that tries to do that so that's where uh with you with them i go for it all again came from just this feeling of like yeah this is a sad song about feeling disconnected but f it friendship's cool so i ended up writing about 
all of my friends that I was writing music with. I was like, with these guys, fuck it. I will try again to be more sociable in my real life and spend more time with people. So there you go. Kind of a nice sentiment. And you are here, I'm gonna try that in B. I was going through an era of my life where I loved those songs that go from quiet to loud to quiet to loud. So uh, you are here was a little love child of that. Don't think it's as good as Car Lights though. So I'm gonna chuck that in B. And there you go. There's the comprehensive James Marriott tier list. Send me your comprehensive James Marriott tier list. Use the hashtag hashtag no do hashtag james use hashtag james marriott and again if you don't know some of these songs go and listen to my best of james marriott playlist i would appreciate it thank you for watching